Hello, this is Ruth Med, the Executive Chair of Women on Boards. Hello, this is my WOB Jobs Board wrap up for the week of the 23rd of June 2021. So hello everybody. Um, currently on the WOB Jobs Board for Australia, we've got 206 vacancies uh, looking for people to fill and about 50 odd percent of these are paid. And on the UK site, we have 821 board seats on offer, of which about 40% of those are paid. So today I thought I'd do a roundup of the fairly eclectic collection of roles that we've got on the jobs board. Um, sometimes I do themes, but this time I thought I'd show you the variety of the range of opportunities. And all the boards that I'm going to talk about are paid, so if that's your interest, stay tuned. Okay, first up, the Energy and Water Ombudsman of New South Wales. This is an industry self-regulatory body that manages complaints about water and energy, etc. They're looking for consumer reps because this is a 50-50 um, board with industry board members and consumer board members. Very interesting roles. They manage complaints um, related to their topic. So I can recommend that to you. Next up, Edith Cowan University Council members. The trend around Australia over the recent years has been for university councils to reduce in size and to pay their board members. So on this occasion, Edith Cowan University is looking for um, a board member and you need general governance skills for this one. That's 22518. Next up, we've got the Working Heritage Commission of Victoria. This is a new body, and they're looking for nine people to sit on this organisation. And essentially, it looks after heritage buildings. I happen to be on the Historic Housing Trust of New South Wales, where we look after heritage buildings. And it's really quite an interesting role, so I can recommend that to you. Um, they have a very broad range of selection criteria, something for everybody. Next up, Court Services Victoria. This is an independent committee member for this body. It's 22538. And they're looking for people who've got experience with cultural change, public policy, and understanding sexual harassment policy. Now, the person who's doing the securing of the board members is um, a headhunting firm and they say this is a very interesting role so there you go if you're interested in that sort of area and I'd suggest you need good HR and public policy skills. Next up Fraser Coast Tourism. This is 22502. They're looking for digital skills broadly. Um, Fraser Coast is up on the northern coast of New South Wales, but I don't think you need to be resident there particularly. And that is an example of a large number of tourism bodies that increasingly are looking for board members and they're increasingly paying them, as is this one. Next up, the Australian Dental Council. This is an example of an industry body related to health, to say the obvious. It's 22407 and they're looking for somebody who's got an understanding of dentistry or a consumer. So have a look at that one. Number seven on my list today is the Northern Territory Public Health Network. Um, they're looking for somebody with skills in allied health or governance. You don't necessarily have to be a resident of the Northern Territory, and that's 22446. Number eight, Disabil Disability Trust New South Wales. This is an example of quite a number of board postings we get, and this one's 22431, where they want people who've got an experience of disability, either as someone with a disability or someone who has experienced disability by being a carer, a family member, et cetera, et cetera. So that's an interesting board also. Not entirely different to that, but slightly different. Helping Hand, which is an aged care body in South Australia, which is part of the Uniting Church. And this is 22560. And they're looking for really hard skills in property development and finance, because quite clearly it sounds to me like they're expanding. 
So there we go. Could be very interesting. You don't have to be necessarily a resident of South Australia. And finally, came in today, Rural Livestock New Zealand. Now they do want a New Zealander, um, but they do want strategy and marketing. So if that's your ballywick and you happen to be a resident of New Zealand, that's one for you. So there you go. That's a really broad selection of different types of boards. They're government, they're private sector, they're joint industry um, consumer bodies, um, they're disability, bo disability bodies. Um, so please consider looking onto the jobs board and see if any of those tackle, tickle, tickle your fancy, sorry. Um, just a word for next steps. You found a vacancy that you're interested in. You absolutely must have a decent board CV because otherwise you'll be in the pile of people that just get put into the rubbish bin immediately if you haven't got a persuasive argument that attracts the attention of the people doing the recruiting. So a decent CV. There's many ways you can get a decent CV. You can write one yourself. Probably statistically that's a little unsuccessful. Um, write one yourself and get some guidance. Um, I have been known to review people's CVs um, and my review comments are either, you just need to tweak it here, here and here, or you need to get some professional assistance um, with rewriting it. We're not all great writers. You can use our online platform, um, which is at our demand learning segment of our um, shopping cart, um, a modest investment, um, and we've had some good success with that of late. Or you can come onto our CV masterclass. That's a good way to get a decent CV. So there are many, many options. But the point is, you desperately must have a decent board CV if you're going to be competitive in applying for any of those 10 board roles that I've spoken about today. So I hope you found this a bit interesting. Um, keep downloading me from YouTube and I might become famous. So thank you very much indeed and good afternoon. Okay.